In this video, I'll show you how to solve the Alex problem called using conservation of energy with electrostatic potential energy. There are two different variations of this problem. I'm going to show you how to solve this version, and I'm also going to talk about the other version of the problem as well. So in, in both versions of the problem, it's going to um, give you some graphics that describe two different experiments. Both experiments are going to contain two different particles, and in this version of the problem, the particles do not change in terms of their charge. So in experiment number one, we can see particle A has a negative two charge and also a negative two charge in experiment number two, and then particle B has a negative one charge in both experiment number one and two. In this version of the problem, the particles are different in terms of the distance between them. In the other version of the, pro the problem, the particles are the same distance apart in both experiments, but they have different charges. So in a, a different version of this problem could possibly Possibly look like this where particle B has the same distance away in both experiment 1 and 2. Um, there's the same distance between particle A and particle B, but particle B has a different charge. So those are the two versions of the problem. Now the problem is going to tell us um, these two objects, because they have the same type of charge, they're both negatively charged, the objects are repelling each other. Uh, and it's going to specifically tell us the velocity of object B in experiment number one. So down here it tells me that object B in experiment number one has a velocity of 31 centimeters per second. I'm just going to make a note of that right here. And it's asking us to calculate the velocity of object B in experiment number two. Uh, so to solve this problem, we are going to recognize that there is this um, force between particles A and B. It's a repulsive force because they have the same type of charge. They're both negatively charged. And that force carries energy with it. So there's some energy associated with that repulsive force. And the energy, uh, uh, the, re the repulsive force, the energy of that repulsive force in experiment number one is kind of equal to the energy of the repulsive force in experiment number two. They're not exactly equal. This equation isn't done yet. That's why I've kind of left myself some space here so we can add to it. What we're trying to do is come up with a mathematical relationship between that force or energy in experiment number one and in experiment number two. So we want to know what is the relationship between the energy in experiment number one versus number two. Now we know that the, the um, potential energy, this repulsive force that's experienced between these two objects is due to one or another variable, one of two variables. The first variable that predicts the energy, this energy in, in each of these experiments, is the distance between the two objects. The closer the objects are to each other, the greater their force is, the greater the force that they experience. I'm just going to use energy instead of force. So the closer the objects are, the greater energy they experience. In experiment number one, because the objects are closer together, the energy of experiment number one is greater than the energy in experiment number two. In experiment number two, the objects are further apart, and that means that they have less energy. The difference in the energy between experiment number one and two is totally proportional to the distance, the relative distance between the two objects. So let's figure out what the distance is between these objects. In experiment number one, the objects are two units apart from each other, whatever that unit is. Experiment number two, the objects are six units apart from each other. So in experiment number one, the, um, the objects are three times closer together than they are in experiment number two, which means uh, if they're three times closer together, that means that they have three times greater energy. And I'm writing that on experiment number two, but really it applies to let's move it up here so there isn't any confusion. So because the objects in experiment number one, because the objects are closer together by a factor of three, the energy in experiment number one is three times greater than the energy in experiment number two. And I'm going to use that to fill in this equation right here. The energy of experiment number one is three times greater than the energy of experiment number two. Now, this is tricky. It's not quite so tricky figuring out what the number should be, like it's three times closer. 
um, 2 times 3 equals 6. So the 3 part is not that hard to figure out, but knowing whether the 3 goes here or here, that is definitely a little bit trickier. Just kind of talk through it in your head for yourself. Now the other version of the problem, let's think about the other version of the problem. The other version of the problem could look something like this, where the objects are the same distance apart. I'm just going to kind of cross this out for a second, but they have a different charge. Um, and so in I'm trying to think of the best word to use here when we have an object with a greater charge whether it is more positive or more negative just larger charge that object is going to have a greater energy so if this was uh, the scenario that we were looking at we would be comparing the magnitude of the charges between objects b because that's where they're different and we would see that uh, in experiment number two Object B has two times a greater charge than, than in experiment number one. That would mean that the energy of experiment number two, the energy of experiment number two is two times greater than the energy of experiment number one. This number, whatever the number is that you're applying, it is always being applied to the weaker of the two experiments, the one that has the weaker forces. Okay, so now that we get this kind of framework set up, this is the equation that we're going to use to help us. Remember, our ultimate goal is to calculate the velocity in experiment number two. So let me take that equation. I'm just going to rewrite it down here. We decided that the energy of experiment number one is three times greater than the energy of experiment number two. The energy of these experiments is the kinetic energy. It's the energy associated with the velocity of the object as it moves away. And the kinetic energy is given by one half times the mass of the object times its velocity squared. So for experiment number one, the energy of experiment number one can be rewritten as one half mv squared, where we're specifically talking about the velocity in experiment number one. So I'm going to put that little one there. That is going to be equal to three times the energy of experiment number two. The energy of experiment number two is one half mv squared. This time we're talking about the velocity in experiment number two there. Now we can see that we have a mass that can cancel out. The problem in here somewhere tells us that the objects have the same mass. It tells us that they all have a mass of one kilogram. So the mass term just cancels out. We can also cancel out this one half. It's present in both the left side and the right side. And that gets our equation down to V1 equals three, V1 squared equals three V squared. And again, as a reminder, we're trying to solve for V2. So let's divide both sides of this equation by 3 so that we can isolate that V2 variable. And then last but not least, let's just go ahead and take the square root of both sides. So that's going to give us um, V1. It's going to give us the, the square root of V1 squared over 3 is equal to the square root of v2 squared. And we can simplify that even further. I'm going to move it on up to here. v1 squared is just v1. That's going to be over the square root of 3. v2 squared is just v2. We know v1, uh, what is it? It is 31 centimeters squared. 31 centimeters squared. So I'm going to plug that in for v1, 31 centimeters, I don't know why I'm saying centimeters squared, 31 centimeters per second over the square root of three, that is our V2. Let's go ahead and do the math on that. 31 divided by the square root of three is 17.898. The units are centimeters per second. Let's see what Alex is asking for in terms of sig figs. Uh, it says two significant figures, so that's going to be 18, and it says don't forget the units, centimeters per second.